Good morning, friends. It's Pastor Steve. This is Grove Church, our online gathering. Uh, right now, we're actually meeting in person and online. So if you want to join us in person next Sunday, RCP by Friday at noon. But right now, you're in the right place as we dig into God's Word, learn more about Jesus' story to us in the parable of how we're to respond to His goodness and His mercy. So we're so glad you're here. Uh, if this is something maybe someone on your timeline might like to hear, just uh, press share now as we continue to prepare our hearts to worship God. Welcome. Our invitation to worship God is called a call to worship and today is from Psalm 34. We will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise is always on our lips. In the Lord our souls shall make their boast. The humble shall hear and be glad. Glorify the Lord with us. Together let us praise God's name. We sought the Lord and were heard from all our terrors set free. Look toward God and be radiant. Let your faces not be ashamed. When the poor cry out, the Lord hears them and rescues them from all their distress. Taste and see that the Lord is good. They are happy who seek refuge in God. Amen. Let us be radiant as God has been good and gracious to us. As we recognize God's goodness, His mercy, we also take some time out to confess our sins to God. I'm going to pray aloud a prayer of confession from Isaiah. First hear these words from Isaiah 58. It is it's not this the fast I choose to lose, loose the bonds of injustice, to share your bread with the hungry, to bring the homeless poor into your house, to clothe the naked? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Having heard these promises from the prophet Isaiah, let us confess our sins. Lord, you come to us, but we do not recognize you. You call, but we do not follow. You command, but we do not obey. You bless us, but we do not thank you. Please forgive and help us. Lord, you accept us, but we do not accept others. You forgive us, but we do not forgive those who wrong us. You love us but we do not love our neighbors. Please forgive and help us. Lord, you showed us how to carry out your mission, but we still insist on your own. You identified yourself with outcasts, the needy, and the poor, but we still do not bother to find out what is happening to them. You suffered and died for the sake of us all, but we do not give up our comfortable lives. Please, Please forgive us and help us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We have confessed our sins, but we hear the promise of God's forgiveness and assurance to us. Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord, Jesus Christ by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. As God has given us peace through Christ, so let us pass the peace of Christ to each other online. The peace of Christ be with you all at home. And also, also with you. you. 
So let us online in the comments greet each other with signs of Christ's peace, forgiveness, and reconciliation. The peace of Christ. Welcome. We're so glad you're with us. Peace be with you. Now will the children please gather around the screen as we have a special message for them. Hey guys, it's Pastor Steve. I hope you've had a little chance to go outside the last couple days and enjoy the sunshine. Um, today's story is a story that Jesus told, a parable, about a rich man and a poor man. And this rich man, he's all worried about himself and the way he's all dressed and all the things, and he doesn't realize that there's a poor man, Lazarus, who's hungry outside. And uh, so this is the story, and, and we'll have some coloring sheets in your packets also, but there's something super interesting in your packet uh, that in your mailing, or if you didn't get the mailing, or if it's too late, you probably have something like this at home. So this is a bag. It's not magic, it's just a plastic bag. So uh, we're reminded that we God wants us to treat people good. He wants us to take care of people. He wants us to take care of those people who don't have much. So what we have here, we're going to make a kit for, maybe we've seen people who are hungry or homeless. So we're going to make a snack kit. So you have this in your house or in your mailing. And I have brought some stuff. I brought some stuff that is always in my house anyway. So I didn't go shopping for these things. But here is some stuff that we could give to people. So I got a, I a drink here. Can I have, can I have, this one's an iced tea. And then I got some snacks that we keep around, some box of raisins, uh, you know, some granola bars, and some other stuff like that. And then also got like a little fruit snacks or fruit strips. And then I, this is what I snack on when I'm studying uh, some beef jerky there. So I have this bag together and what you could do with a bag like this you can take it and uh, when you go with you, you could keep it in your car or put it on the stroller. And sometimes we see people who are asking for money or need a little, look like they could use a little snack or a little drink. Uh, and then we could give it to them and say, hey, here's something that you can use to, uh, to help you or if people are hungry or homeless. So what well, other stuff you could put in here, you could put a little homemade note and say, hey, I'm praying for you. You could put a little Bible book. You could put a McDonald's gift card or things you could also put maybe you ever got the dentist and you have all these like extra toothbrushes and toothpaste and stuff or maybe little soaps from hotels. Those are things you could put here. You could go to the store and buy stuff. But like I said, what I did is these are just stuff I had around snacks I just had around my house and you could do this and then next time someone asks for money or maybe someone, someone might need something, you could have something ready for them. I don't if you want, you could put it even right on the bag and say, hey, I'm praying for you, or have a good day, or God loves you. A reminder that God loves them and remembers them. So this is a pack that you can make this week with stuff from home. So you could be a blessing to others. Because God calls us to love God and to love our neighbors. Well, will doing this get you into heaven? No, right? There's nothing we can do. It's God's love and grace and us trusting God, us having faith. So this is not something we do so that we could go to heaven. This is something we do because we love God and we love people. So this is a simple way that you could put together a special little packet to uh, help our neighbor, help our neighbors in need. All right, guys. That's, uh, we're gonna worship God in song. It's so good to see you. I hope, like I said, you're having a, you're having a good time, a good day, and maybe we'll see you, maybe I'll see you you know, in person in a couple days or a couple weeks or a couple months. Right, let's pray. God, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray for the people who we're going to give these bags to, that they may know that you love them, that they may know that you're the truth, that they know that, that you have not forgotten them. God, thank you that you have allowed us to be part of your helpers, to love you and to love others. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. See you next Sunday. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, 
and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and renew a right spirit within me. Our scripture this morning comes from Luke 16, 19 to 31. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. And at his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angel carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried in hell, where he was in torment. And he looked up and saw Abraham, Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called him, Father Abraham, have pity on me 
and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue, because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things? But now he is comforted here. You are in agony. And besides all this between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, then they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and to the prophets, then they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the gift of your word, Lord. We thank you for this teaching, O oh God, and we pray that we may respond, Lord, as the as the the tulips respond to the warm weather of spring, Lord. May uh, our soul, our spirits, Lord, our obedience respond to your word this morning. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Last week we looked at the parable of the lost son, and this week's scripture we listened to a new parable, this time about the perspective of someone who has died already. And we are to learn as Jesus, the master teacher, storyteller, and God's son, uh, teaches this parable for us. In this story, we have Lazarus, a righteous poor man who suffered much in his life, but is now in the comfort of the afterlife. And we have a rich man who lived the comfort of his earthly existence and now is in the agony of hell. And through the power of story, we get to re-examine our own lives this morning in the light of the dialogue of this dead rich man and Abraham. Some of you have probably have never even heard this parable before. It's not one of the well-known ones, but I believe God has something in store for us today. As we listen to the story, we remember that stories uh, transform us. Right? They transport us also to land like Narnia or Middle Earth or different time periods like the Roaring Twenties or the Revolutionary War. We learn through the experiences of heroes, of villains, of commoners. In the previous chapter of Luke, we learn from that young son, remember, who go and cashed out his inheritance. And today we learn from a dead rich man who missed opportunities. The rich man in this parable and the storyteller both desire us, the listeners, to learn from this afterlife experience. Jesus chooses this story because he wants the audience, including the present day audience, to re-examine our lives in the light of this story so we won't face that chasm in the life ever after, so we live a life today that is uh, worthy of the calling that we have received. Often, the way we learn best is by making mistakes. I know my little one now at one, he's in the learning to walk stage where he, he normally stands or then he gets on his knees and kind of crawls through the, the house. He's not really, uh, you know, he, takes, he stands for a little bit, keeps his balance, gets really happy and falls over, right? Because that's how we learn, by making mistakes. Maybe this year you've learned some skill that you had to learn. I know some of you have jumped on uh, social media for the first time and learning about that. Probably two years ago, you would never would have thought that you would be on Facebook. Uh, some of you are learning math as you help your children, maybe relearning math or learning it for the first time as you help your children in remote learning. Uh, John Pecorelli and I, we've been talking and growing in our skills in video editing, something that we haven't done as much and we find ourselves doing weekly but we learn by trial and error, by trying to do things better next time, right? That's how our skills develop, whether it's your uh, free throws or whether it's your video editing or our music practice as musician, we learn from our mistakes and trying to correct them. But there are times when we're teaching, when we're helping our children, we want them to learn from our mistakes, to learn life lessons uh, from what we've done. We don't want them to undergo the same heartache and heartbreak that we have happened ourselves, right? 
And, and in some ways, this, it happens in a workplace environment as well when we're teaching someone else, right? We want the new employees to not mess up and not fall into those common pitfalls and do better from things that we've learned, the tricks and tips that we've learned along the way. When we disciple new Christians, new believers, we, we tell them about things we learned about prayer and reading the Bible and talking to God and, and stewarding their lives and avoiding temptation because we want these Christians, these new believers, to avoid the previous mistakes maybe that we have wrestled with. Maybe they'll have to make their own new mistakes, but hopefully we can spare them from the common mistakes that we ourselves struggled with. In our scripture this morning, the rich man was making, made some big mistakes. He was blinded by his comfort and his status. He could not see the spiritual and physical needs that were around him. And since death is final, there was no redo, no opportunity to learn from his mistakes, but he hoped that his brothers surely could. The rich man, his neighbor was Lazarus. As you heard, Lazarus was hungry. Lazarus was in poor health. And if this wealthy man wanted to meet the needs of his neighbor, he just had to walk outside the door. He had plenty to do uh, the good things that God has called, desired him to do. He had plenty to meet the basic needs of Lazarus, but in his rich life, he was just not aware, not aware of the needs before him. He was dressed in luxury. He had all his physical needs met, and, there, and more so. And even though there was hunger just outside his door, his lifestyle insulated him from poverty. There was no love for a neighbor evident. There was no fruit of the love of God in this parable either. He was kind of just living life on his own terms till he died. The wealthy man was not only blind to the hunger outside his door, he was blind to the, the hunger of the spiritual needs, his own spiritual need, the needs of his family. And he didn't realize it until it was too late. In his death, that's when he's now concerned about the spiritual life of those in his family. In our temporary lives, it's easy to miss the point to focus on our fleeting desires, our fleshly riches, right? Because normally that's what life is kind of on autopilot. That's what we do. We just go through uh, the motions. We work on our to-do list. We meet the requirements that are expected of us. We have uh, to purchase groceries, we have cars to maintain, we have bills to pay, we have wardrobes that need to be updated. It's easy to overlook our own spiritual needs and the needs of our neighbor when we're so consumed with ourselves. We're just trying to make it day by day. But in the robust arc of eternity, we can be sure that there's more to life than this more to life than just uh, what to eat and what to drink and what to wear. Hey, that sounds like Jesus' teaching, right? There's more to life than the, the basic minimums that, that occupy our to-do list, than just paying bills and just trying to have fun on the weekends. There's truly more, it's truly more blessed to give food to others than it is to eat at the most important tables. It's truly better to clothe others than to be dressed in the most luxurious purple. There's more to life than just pleasing ourselves and trying to have a good time. Children of God, this morning I'm wondering what are some of your blind spots? We don't have to be rich in our own eyes to miss focus. Some of you are saying, well, that was a rich man. I'm not rich. Um, you know, maybe in the world scheme you might be rich, and, but maybe you don't see yourself as rich or wealthy, but it's still very easy to focus on the temporary and miss the eternal. Life is busy. Life is busy. Even those of you who have been uh, in retirement have told me how, how surprised you are, how much time consumes, even in retirement. There's things that need addressing, homes and health and a lot of things to do. It is our hope that in this season of Lent that our Lenten practices, like those of repentance and fasting and prayer, are meant to stop this autopilot of the busyness in life, autopilot of needs and demands. 
It's our hope that these fast, these uh, fasting and prayer and repentance and, and uh, whatever silence and simplicity and whatever the disciplines that you are uh, experiencing this season, that it will cause us to pause and look at our spiritual needs, to look inward at where we're falling short, to look inward at what needs attention that maybe is being glossed over. We need to look around before we get swept into the flow of the day-by-day mode, if we swept by maintenance mode or even crisis management. There's so many things out there. Even right now at home, there's, there's maybe notifications popping up or there's the phone ringing or emails coming in. It's so easy to get distracted on all the things around us and lose focus on what we're here for and for who we're supposed to bring glory. It is possible to be so distracted with even affirming or disputing the way COVID is being handled that we may be missing opportunities to minister in Jesus' name. We, we could be so consumed with our freedom or our safety in the last year that we're not looking to be used by God as ambassadors for his kingdom. This last year has put pause on a lot of things in my life and in your life as well. But it has not put a pause in the opportunities to love God or love others. It may look a little different. There might be different challenges involved. But there's sure a boatload of opportunities to love God and to love our neighbor right here and now. Maybe even folks in our church family, maybe folks, maybe your little neighbor right outside your door, maybe those in your household or your family. The parable of this rich man and Lazarus that Jesus is is telling is meant to be a wake-up call. Are we focusing on the right things? Are we focusing on the internal? Are we investing in what matters? Are we paying attention to the things right around the corner that God may be asking us to respond to? Or are we so consumed and focused on the day-to-day on our desires, on our kingdom, on our comfort. Did you notice that the, in the parable, the rich man is not named while the needy man was named, was, his name is known as Lazarus? I think there's at least two reasons for that. First, if there's any doubt that the poor matter to God, we know uh, Lazarus' name. Names are important. A lot of times the emphasis on who they are and and their identity. We know Lazarus' name. God knows that Father Abraham is talking to Lazarus. Lazarus probably did not have a lot of esteem in his life, but he's known and treasured as some child of God. His name is known. There's some faulty understanding of God that makes mistakes of, and says that our health is our health and our wealth is a, mer- a marker of God's blessing. Right? There are some people that are trying to say that that is the equivalent, that if you're wealthy, if you're rich, you know, if you're healthy, that means God is smiling upon you. But this parable totally challenges that. Maybe that's why it's not that, po- that uh, popular. Right? The, the one who was in favor was Lazarus. The one who was wealthy was actually not living in God's will. We know Lazarus' name. God knows his name. Second reason I think uh, the rich man is not named is because there's, this is a teaching device. Remember, parables are not meant to be uh, historical events, but it's a teaching device. It's to insert your name here. The listeners of the story are wondering, am I this rich man? Maybe you this morning saying, am I this rich man? We're set to wonder and to, to think about if that's really who we are. If we were to have a chat with Father Abraham, what would be our regrets in our lifetime? What, what perspective we would have if we were chatting with Father Abraham? What perspective we'll have of what, is, what God is doing? How we would live differently? What would our wish be from the beyond? What would be our wish of what God wants to do and wants us to do? The wealthy man wanted his family not to experience the agony of hell. Even in life, even in life, we still, we, we, we still don't want our loved ones to experience the agony of what we have experienced. Perhaps it's the anguish of abuse. 
or the suffering of grief or the personal distress of poor health. We want to spare people those experiences. If we love people, we want them to do better than us. Right? Many immigrant families come to, a, come to the U.S. because of the agony they're experiencing in their own home country, in their own motherland. So they come here for a better country. They come here for a better life for their children. Right? Because they don't want their children to grow up in the tyranny that they or the poverty that they did. They have these hopes that their children will never know these hardships. The rich man knows a deeper agony still and wants his family to avoid suffering. So now he wants to send a messenger to his family. Right? You, you can relate. He wants, some, he wants that to be addressed. So he, he's thinking maybe Lazarus could go and, and, and do that. I can't leave. Maybe Lazarus could bring me comfort or could help uh, other people avoid the situation. But Abraham gives the heartbreaking truth that the prophets and Moses are enough, which is the Bible, right? The, those are the authors of the Old Testament. The Bible is enough to testify, to be bear witness of who God is. And there is no coming back from the dead. While we have some regrets of what we've done, maybe there's been decisions you made that have been bad. Maybe you would say, hey, I would do this over again. There's some parts of our life where there's no room for regrets. There's no room for do-overs. This story reminds us that there's some things that you have this one shot you have this one life to make a difference. You have this one life to help your neighbor. You have this one life to glorify God. You have this one life to prepare for an endless eternity. There's things that we regret, things that we do wrong. But there's other things that this is our shot. If you're watching today, this is your shot. This is your opportunity how can you steward your time on earth well? How can you steward this week well, this month well? Lent is often a time of reflection. Are we pouring into the right things? Are we caring for the least of these? Those people who are outside our door, are you sharing the life-changing gospel? Friends, God has given you all you need to live a godly life. He's given you all you need to share the good news of Christ, to help meet the needs of the neighbor. He's not going to ask you to do something that he's not going to help you accomplish. Some of you saying, hey, I'm not a rich person. But he's given you what you need to do what he calls you to do. And if he hasn't given it to you now, he will give it to you when you take those first steps, when you obey God has given us everything we need to do his will, to love him and to love our neighbor, to uh, help meet the needs of those in our community and to participate in his plan of redemption and rescue for humanity. God has given us everything we need to do his will. This is your opportunity. This is your life. Let's listen to God. Glorify him. Let's pray. God, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your truth, for your mercy, for your love, for your Son, Jesus Christ. God, we pray today, Lord, and we seek your face. We help us to steward our lives well. Help us to love you with all our strength, with all our might, with all our heart. Help us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Thank you, God, for loving us, for helping us. Lord, we pray for the needs in our congregation. Pray for those who are sick. Uh, Lord, for those who are hurting. We pray for our in-person meetings, Lord. May they be honoring and glorifying to you. We pray for those at home right now, Lord, that they may see your face. Help us, Lord, to serve you and your people. And we pray this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you again for joining us online this Sunday. Once again, you can join us next Sunday. We'll be online right here or RCVP by Friday at noon. Uh, call the church office so you can join us in person uh, next Sunday. Another way to respond is by the giving of tithes and offerings. Thanks so much for your financial support and your contribution to this ministry. We believe it's a worship to God and uh, it helps us to serve you and serve our neighbors as well. Thank you for that. Um, also, in a few moments, we're going to worship the Lord by singing. We have uh, John Pecorelli is going to be coming back and, and leading us in song and greater. And then we'll have some reflection questions as we dig into this and as we take this home and try to live out what God has taught us this morning. Receive this blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you now and always. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. the world. 